Oh, spooky. Never been to the land of Giga at night. Oh, it's blinding. All I can see are boxes. Now, it might look a little skimpy right now, but trust me, this is gonna be one of the Giga parts. Oh, hey, same hat, different hairstyle. This is Disney Docket from the future. And I just wanted to interject to show you guys all the new boxes I've gotten in that you'll see later in this video. Like, this is a super Giga haul. <laughs> yeah, guys, we'll be eating good today. Okay, this is absolutely adorable. I just opened this box to prepare for the Giga haul, and I see Le Boo Boo. It's like a little cartoon rabbit. Oh my God, it's so cute. If somebody knows Mandarin, please translate this for me and let me know who is Le Boo Boo. Like, how could you tease me like that and ask the question and then not provide an English answer, you know? Oh my gosh. Dang, I wish I knew that language. But anyways, yeah, guys, welcome to Giga Hall Part 11. Oh my gosh, I haven't even released Part 9 yet. The stuff is just piling up every time I come home, and I've been coming home a lot. In fact, I'm home right now because tomorrow I'm leaving home to go to Tampa Bay. I'm going to the Buccaneers-Packers game. I really want to see Tom Brady play one final time. Well, actually, this will be the first time I see him play, but you know, it's like his last season. So yeah, there's that. Big football fan, if you guys didn't know. All right, guys, we're just going to dive right in and just start tearing into all these boxes. Sorry, LaBooBoo. We got to open up and see what's inside here. So this is actually, from what I believe, this one came today, in fact, and it is a very, very exciting prototype. Never really seen anything like this. So this is for the basic collection, if you guys don't know. It's the plastic Disney cars that are sold internationally, like not in the United States, maybe in Canada, but more so in Malaysia, Oceanic countries, and then down in Latin America and South America. Not really sure why they do it, but there you see basic collection. Looks like there's a little Sharpie code marking there. This is actually for Lightning McQueen, but as you can see, it's actually a Sally, and she is entirely in black and blends in perfectly with the card, so it's really hard to even tell what she is. But yeah, it's got a gray base, very cool prototype. Like I said, I've never seen anything like it. It really does look like just a prototype for a die cast because of you know not being her usual color, but yeah, it's a basic collection Sally. Really cool. I love how the tires and everything match her body. That's just like, oh my God, I can't even see. Like it just blends in with the card back. What an illusion. But yeah, really cool. Something very unique in my collection. And that is what I'm going for at this point. Unique pieces. Sneeze. Oh, sorry guys. <coughs> I know that sounded weird, but it's because I tried to like combine the word sneeze. Well, I wanted to say sneeze before I sneeze, but I actually kind of said it during the sneeze. And so it came out like really weird. All right, what is in this box here? What is in this box? She do not, okay, yeah, now I do know. All right, so this will make sense after you see Giga Hall. Well, you probably have, I hope you have watched Giga Hall part 10. Cause in part 10, I got in those character stars three packs of Kingpin, well, no, Pinion Tanaka, Shutaroki and Light McQueen. And we were talking about how weird they were. You know, one didn't have headlights. They were on the wrong packages and the packages they were on were actually these so if you guys saw i'll actually pull them out here real quick let me go get them perfect here it is so while you see pinion tanaka mcqueen and shoot to the Roki, the package advertises for holly shiffle acer and hydrofoil fin so does the back here now, I make the distinction there because the inside of the package is correct. That Tokyo skyline is supposed to be there, and that's because it's a whole piece attached to the base which ties in the die cast there. Because you can see the actual version of the three pack, which I just got, has the Porta Corsa background. So, very strange. Again, you know, we were talking about how McQueen doesn't have headlights, shoe looks like a unibody. So, some friends of mine thought this might be like a prototype set. Also, this like thing up here wasn't punched out, like the hook wasn't punched all the way through. So, you still have this little cardboard tab in there. So, a lot of weird things going on with this three pack. But regardless, the bottom line is that it prompted me to go out and get one of these other rare three packs from the 2011 line. Sensei Luminous scavenged this one off Mercari for me. He was able to find it. He's so good at finding stuff online. So yeah, he found it, sent it to me. I bought it. 
Really good deal actually, because I thought that this one was at the same level of rarity as the Pinion Tanaka pack, because I thought they were both released only internationally. But as you can see, this is English packaging, like this is American packaging, whereas that is international. I thought they were released in the same case, but maybe not, maybe so, maybe that one was also in the United States, but it's clear that this one was. Regardless though, it still is quite, quite rare. Like there are none other. After that one, there are no more available for sale online at this time. Now maybe at the time you know you see this video, there is. And if you see one, you should definitely consider purchasing it because these three packs from 2011 are extremely underrated. And because of that, no one just cares to sell them. And well, no one really cared to buy them. They never included something new. In fact, they pretty much just had all of the 2011 deluxes featured as icons. And, you know, so there's a Topper Deckington one. As you can see, there's Kingpin down there, Submarine Finn. And funny enough for this one, you can't recreate this scene, technically, because Holly Shiftwell is nowhere to be seen when Finn uses his hydrofoils. There's also a Holly with Wings pack, but the two rarest ones are undoubtedly the Pinion Tanaka one and this one here. So yeah, pretty cool. I'm happy to have this one and it's in really good condition. So there's that. All right, so we have this box right here. And this here is another one of those international only type situations that I just absolutely adore. You know, as somebody who wants to like collect everything, you know, I want to have everything loose. I want to have one of everything in the package for the most part. Stuff like this is super annoying to me. A lot of people probably don't know that RV here was released for 2022, but you know, you're staring at him. There he is. He indeed was the database BDD, the French website that documents or tries to document all of the releases. And I know he watches my videos. He's great. But he actually doesn't have this one. At the time I'm recording this video, this guy is not on the database. And so hopefully he can add it. You know, maybe I'll put a nice little, make a nice little shot for him. He could take a picture. I'll just send him a picture. But yeah, this guy was only released in Canada. Like it's not even like an international broad release. It's only in Canada. So yeah, this one was quite expensive. Not only because he was international, but RV just naturally is one of the more desirable rare deluxes and in fact all three of these guys are pretty rare you know even though they've been released a lot they tend to go quickly especially with the state of deluxes right now which is abysmal deluxes are not sold at target or walmart in the united states or really any major retailer anywhere meyer which is a midwest store here in the united states fred meyers which is a northwest store yeah, they carry them from time to time, but I wouldn't consider that a major retailer since they're only in certain regions. HEB is only in Texas, so you have to kind of be lucky with it or you order online. Now, on the flip side of that, there hasn't been much of a need for people to buy deluxes because Mattel hasn't inserted a new deluxe since 2021. There have been zero new deluxes since 2021, and in 2021, there were only two. So... Hopefully things pick up. They kind of have to because Cars on the Road really elicits it. You know, there's a lot of oversized characters. One of the main characters, Ivy, you know, that's going to be a deluxe. I would love if Mattel somehow crammed her into a single pack or they'd probably just make her really small, but they basically need to do deluxes if they want to be successful here, you know, and take full advantage of the Cars on the Road hype. Like, Truly, I mean, they'll be successful either way, but if they want to take advantage of everything at their fingertips, realize the full potential there is to be had with cars on the road, you got to do deluxes again. All right, so we got some Battle Force 5 stuff here. This is from a good friend of mine. Oh my God, everything's coming out. Ah! All right, let's get these two out of the box here. You guys who don't know much about Battle Force 5 probably do by now after seeing all the videos. Well, I've done two videos. I'm not sure if the second one's come out yet, but I have a collection update video for Battle Force 5 after the one I did, 
I think it was like the very first video I posted this year, or the very last video I posted last year. But anyways, with all the Battle Force 5 stuff throughout the Giga Halls, hopefully you guys maybe have piqued an interest for the show. It truly is not only one of the best animated shows ever, it's just one of the best shows, period. The storyline is phenomenal, the music is great, and just the character development and interactions is really, really, like, it moves me. Like, every time I watch it, and I still do, like, it's just emotionally very gripping for me. So yeah, here you go. This is one I don't have. This is the Battle Zelix because he has his weaponry out, one that I've been needing for a while. So happy to have it. Of course, Zemerick and the Zelix. You guys are like, which one's the car? <laughs> it's the Zelix. Zemerick is the driver. Here's another one that's pretty cool. It's the this looks like international packaging as well. Yep, it is. It's the like Battle Zone Edition Reverb. So instead of having normal tires, he has these red ones. I think it actually I think they do call it Battle Zone Edition, but it more so would apply to like the Storm Shock when their tires turn like really hot cuz they're going through the tornado essentially. But yeah, I love that little sticker right there. That looks so cool with the purple and the red. So yeah, Reverb driven by Stanford so yeah, I'm almost done with my Battle Force 5 collection. You know, if you if I posted the collection update part two, none of this stuff is in it, obviously, but I talk about how I really just need a packaged Vilarex. I actually have two loose Vilarexes. I have a packaged Vinicus, but I could use a loose Vinicus, could use a packaged Vilarex, and most importantly, a Zendril of any sort. But yeah, here's a couple of the pullback. Yeah, all right. We got some of the 143 scale stuff in general here. We have a pullback reverb. They did a lot of these like weird 143 scale lines. They still kind of confuse me, but there were like pop out weapon versions and you know, basically mainly pop out weapon versions and these pullbacks. So I already have the pop out weapon version of the reverb that you might have seen in a previous gig haul. And then here is the pullback. On the flip side of that, I already had the pullback saber, so here's the pop-out weapon version of the saber. Now, the weapons aren't accurate to the show at all. Like That is not what his car does in the slightest, but if they were to make it accurate, it'd be very difficult for this car. But yeah, that's gorgeous. I really do like the look of it. It looks really nice. Saber driven by Vert. I think I just need the scarab in this line now, which shouldn't be too hard to acquire. But yeah, since everything else is slowed down, like in terms of me getting the, you know, Vilarex or Zendril, I've been just trying to fill the holes of some of the easier things to get, smaller variants and whatnot. Oh, this is, where's the tape? There it is. So yeah, smaller variants and just kind of some boring stuff like this. I don't know if you would consider this boring, but the Tangler was released in like from the fused line as well as being initially released you know in the season one line so whenever it says fuse that just refers to the second season it does look to be a variant though i did not know this but it does look to be a variant because of that dark gray part there which looks like they made it plastic whereas before it was metal as you can see it was just raw metal so that's interesting it's a little bit more exciting now everything else looks to be the same though but yeah it's hard to even see like that the or like I don't even know. Like I didn't even know that they made the Tangler like regular for season two. Like it it's one of those releases that goes under the radar so easily. Same thing with just a regular reverb. Most of the fused reverbs you see will have his like guns popped out, but not this one. And so it's just like wow, I can't believe they did a regular version. They did so many variants for the second season. They pretty much like re-released everything from the first season and then some, of course. Here's another one that I find really cool. It is the Buster Tank, but in battle edition, like it's battle version because it's got all of the flying chains out and the pop-out spikes right there on the side. It's really hard to describe what kind of weapons he has, but it's really awesome, really badass. And yeah, super excited to get this one. And here's just your regular Buster. So cool. So cool. I had the like blue buster, I think, or there was a buster I had for the, sh 
fused season, but it wasn't either of these. So yeah, they did like three versions of it. All right, we got a couple more things. Yeah, one more box here for now. I think I will again wait and get some more stuff before I upload part 11 just because you know I want this to be a big episode, like I said. It's just I got to like record them in segments or fragments just to clear like my area here of all the boxes when I come home. All right, so here we have the brand new color changers. Well, at this point, they aren't so new of Rumbler Lightning McQueen and Road Trip Lightning McQueen. So you already have seen my review on these. I ordered these off eBay, in fact, from West Coast Toy Mafia. And yet I found them in a store before I received these. So that was a little like weird. It was like, oh darn, I didn't think I would find them. I was actually one of the first to find them like in the United States ever. So that was a little strange, but I'm not upset about it because actually, yeah, I thought these were on international packagings, but they're all international now. Never mind. I was just going to be like, oh, I'm not upset because these are variant packages. No, they're all the same. But yeah. As I have probably said in my review of them, the color changer video, I am in love with this Road Rumbler Lightning McQueen. I can't wait for them to do a diecast version of it. The art looks so cool. He just looks so vicious and ravenous, even though that's like completely not what he acts like during that episode. But yeah, this is a really cool set right here. I absolutely adore the stock images as well. He just looks so good. I like the expression. I love the spikes. I like all the bolts and like the plating on his body there. The only thing I don't like, which I'm sure I talked about, is that he should still be in his on-the-road paint scheme. It's not like he removed that paint scheme, so he should still have that. They even removed it for the art, which is a little concerning for when they do the diecast version of him. And then this is your third version of a Road Trip Lightning McQueen color changer because they did the blue to red and they did the yellow to red and the whale car wash set. So now since they released them as a single, you get gray to red, even though it looks like a little tainted gray. It looks like it's got a little bit of pink in there. So yeah, all right guys, that is all for part one of part 11 of the Giga Hall. We'll be back. Well, you know, it'll be a couple seconds for you, but for me, it'll probably be a few weeks actually. Hopefully it's around Halloween time when this comes out. That'd be pretty cool, you know, with the whole spooky, spooky intro and all that. All right guys. And I am back a couple days later with two boxes from Get Me Collectibles. I'm not sure if this will round out Giga Hall Part 11, but it'll definitely add to it. And I couldn't be more excited about the big boy box. This first one here, it's pretty cool. It's something that I probably should have gotten a long time ago. There's actually a funny story with this that encapsulates... 12 years or so, but this is the lenticular Lightning McQueen that came with that Rusty's can back in 2010. It was a chase, actually. It was this McQueen with a unique expression and the accessory. Now, I don't know, when I was nine at the time, I didn't give a flying rabbit about this, and I just ordered the Rusty's can loose on eBay for probably like 10 bucks. I actually don't think it was that much. I feel like it was more around five, which is not too bad. And honestly, it's not that stupid. I mean, yeah, it's not stupid at all. Like if you don't care about just like another variant in between and just want the accessory, then yeah, that totally makes sense. I understand where my nine-year-old self came from, but now as a more complete collector, I thought that this actually is a pretty neat variant of McQueen. You can see the expressions are pretty good. Like look at that one, that one's pretty good. And, uh, that one's pretty good too like if you get it at the right angle you can make some pretty cool expressions out of this mcqueen and i like the mouth plate here because of course back in 2010 they used mouth plates ridiculously just so they could like switch out them all the time and make new expressions so yeah that is this mcqueen happy to finally get it in my collection and i already made a spot for it so yay now this is something I've been wanting to get for a long, long time. The other McQueen, you know, it's not like something I've been dreaming about, it's just something that I saw that Gimme Collectibles had listed on. I was like, oh yeah, let me grab that. This, however, is something I've actively sought after for years and it's extremely rare because it was only released in the United Kingdom back in around 2010 as well. It's probably one of the best 
Disney store items in the history of the Cars line, and that is Monster Truck Mac. So as you guys might know, they've done a lot of Macs that correspond to a specific theme at a time. And recently they've done this, like with the XRS Drag Racers, the XRS Mud Racers, a little while ago, of course, Carnival Racers, Carbon Racers, etc. And they would come with some cars inside. And so it actually kind of started with this one here back in 2010 with this Monster Truck Mac. It's, oh my God, it's absolutely incredible. And it came with a bunch of monster trucks, most notably Dr. Frankenwagon, who was you know, basically exclusive to this set in the sense that Mattel didn't make him and the Disney store only released him in this set. So, oh my God, I thought I broke it there for a second. It was just super stiff. But yeah, this side here has some nice graphics of the monster truck made their shorts. It looks like it's kind of peeling off a little bit, but you know, obviously I understand that it's been like 12 years. But yeah, really cool. I actually don't know much about like the features of this Mac just because it's very limited in its documentation, you know, in the sense that only released in the UK, very limited, not many people have pictures of it, always typically sold loose. Like I have not seen a package one of these sell in a long time. The loose ones tend to pop up a little bit more frequently I actually saw one sell on Mercari recently for like $85 or maybe it was even less than that and I was kind of jealous that I didn't get to it fast enough. The only problem with this one is it's missing its side view mirror. Don't really care about that because I mean I'm not going to get another one that's in as good a condition as this. This little hat up here says Monster Truck Rassler. Rassler. And then this side should have compartments for the cars that were included in it yep so it's kind of weird they all fit in they were like super thin monster trucks like they weren't really up to scale but dr frankenwagon who made a recent appearance in my screaming banshee versus tyrannosaurus rex shorts he's in the post credit episode or the post credit scene i'm sure a lot of you guys didn't stick around for that but if you did you got a treat he probably fit into one of these cubbies here yeah they're deep and thin there was also the referee pity that was included. I think he came in this top right corner up there. But yeah, there's quite a few compartments up here. It's a very interesting set for sure. Very cool. <laughs> Obviously, Mac does not appear in the short at all, but we could use our imaginations that, you know, eventually after maybe I would I would headcanon this as like something that would happen like after the events of Monster Truck Mater where they become like an actual tag team and go on to just dominate the world because of their defeat of, you know, Dr. Frankenwagon's monster. But yeah, this guy's super cool. I probably will do a review on him at some point. Here's a little look at the back. See, I've never even seen this myself. Like Monster vs. Torment, the Monster vs. Tormentor. Yeah, I've never even like looked at this graphic before. So that's pretty cool. You have Rasta Carrera and The Monster, Ice Screamer. Wow, that's awesome. Frightening McMean versus Rasta Carrera or Rasta Carrion, which is something that didn't even happen in the short. But yeah, looks like there's a little handlebar up here. I'll leave all that stuff for when I do a I don't know. Yeah, review of it or something like that. But I'm actually not going to make this the end of Giga Hall episode or part 11 yet. It's only been like 20 minutes. So yeah, we're going to wait, you know, give a couple more weeks. And I really want to release this one around Halloween. So hopefully that is what ends up happening. Future Docket is back and you guys are about 16 minutes into Giga Hall part 11. But it's really just beginning. I have so much more to share with you guys here and this truly is the big boy stuff now that mac was pretty badass but just hold your breath because it is going to get even more intense starting with the mcdonald's happy meal toys yay yeah so this stuff and that two pack back there are open out of the box already because they came from mercari mercari has this three day dispute window after delivery so you have three days from delivery to dispute the item if it arrived damaged or wrong so I had my mom thank you mom for you know opening these while I was at school because obviously I would not have been able to return just come back open my Mercari package head back to school yeah unfortunately I don't live that close to my school but yeah cruiser mirrors here this one's pretty boring you 
have to apply stickers to it. Now, if you guys remember, you saw me go to McDonald's and I found the basic Lightning McQueen. I have not been back to McDonald's and I just decided to order them online. So yeah, unfortunately, no trip back. Maybe I'll still do a short before October 17th when it ends. I don't know, that would be fun. That first short did very well view-wise, so I might try it. Here you have Ivy, another one that you have to add stickers to, but she is way bigger than I thought she'd be. You know what, I might make a whole video on these. You know, maybe I'll get another set, open them up. I'm not sure. Is it even worth it to keep them like in the bags? Probably not. But you know what, McDonald's actually, a lot of the cars in their series here are the very first iterations of them from any manufacturer. Like that was basically the first version of Ivy, unless you're going to count the, well, the Mattel version from the playset or the mini racer version. But here you have... The Cave Mater, this is the first version ever of Cave Mater. Tomika will be next. Same thing with Cave Lightning McQueen here. Mattel will have a Cave Lightning McQueen in an upcoming playset, but that isn't out yet. Here's Basic Mater. Now, I like some of these. This one you have to do stickers, but I like Cave McQueen here, Cave Mater. You don't have to do stickers on either of these, and that's what really makes them exciting. Same thing with, oh, you do have to do them for rumbler mater here this is the one i truly wanted because we have no idea when we'll get a version of rumbler mater from any brand like i said with the cave ones we know that tomika is doing them and for rumbler lightning mcqueen here we know that well we do already have the color changer version from mattel which i reviewed several weeks ago so rumbler mater is truly like the best one objectively from the mcdonald's line but yeah it was fun i'm really glad that they did that like really surprised honestly because they didn't for cars 2 or 3 or any of the cars tunes that came out so it was a nice surprise and it created for some fun traveling some fun you know <laughs> conversation everyone's like what'd you get at mcdonald's well i got the nuggets man and here we have a brand new two-pack from the latest accessory two-pack wave that also includes Lightning McQueen from On the Road and Racing Center Cruz Ramirez. So obviously both of the cars in that set had already been released, but all of the accessories are new, the flags and the little stickers. These are actually stickers. I did not discern that when I reviewed the first wave. I just thought they were like cardboard stands, but you can actually peel the decal off. I won't be doing that because I think they look better like this where you could just set them up wherever and not you know be attached to wherever you stick them onto but the reason why i bought this one ahead of time and i kind of regret it now i'll explain why in a moment but i bought it ahead of time because dad's jamming here this is his first time ever being released of course he was one of the first cars on the road color changers but this is the first die cast version of him and he looks amazing in that like bare metal zamac finish i will be revealing him very very soon Royce Revsley here came out a little bit ago, and I don't know how I'm going to do this exactly, but I do regret it because there are two Dats Jammins in Case M of 2022 singles. I knew that, like I knew it was coming, but I did not expect it to be so soon. Like you guys probably have already seen my unboxing of 2022 singles Case M, which I have right here with me. I'll probably do that video tomorrow and upload it on like October 15th or 16th or something like that, but this video won't come out for a little bit. Either way, what I'm trying to say is that I shouldn't have bought this two pack so advanced because I would have been able to just get the one out of the, you know, case, but then I still would want to open this up for the accessories and all that stuff. So yeah, it's just like all the little calculations I make in my head to make sure I'm still being like financially viable while also getting like good reviews out for you guys because I don't want to be like reckless and buy a bunch of stuff, you know, that allows me or that gives me a bunch of duplicates but yeah we'll see how it goes i don't know i don't want to open two dads jammins like within a couple days of each other so i might just open this one and basically pretend it's for both reviews if you guys know what i mean but all right let's start with our first box here i really do not know what's in a bunch of these things because i ordered you know all this stuff over the course of the last month and I kind of have an idea of what should be here, but I can't really pinpoint what's in each box. This one is a variant of Burnt Lightning McQueen from 2010. I got it loose, so hopefully it's in decent condition, and it looks to be 
Couple blemishes, but I don't really care. This is an older car, it's a rare variant. And I think somebody, I'm not sure who it was, I'm sorry, but somebody said that I was missing a variant. And actually, I think I'm missing two variants of Burnt Lightning McQueen. I know I'm missing this one for sure, so I was able to pick it up. So thanks to whoever that was for letting me know. Hopefully you're still watching and you can realize that I listened and that I corrected that because in fact, I do think I have the other version Oh yeah, this is perfect. Okay, so for whatever reason, like Burnt Lightning McQueen's just weird. There were a bunch of variations of him. And then of course they changed Burnt McQueen to Soaked McQueen. Because, I don't know, insensitivity, I guess. I shouldn't be mean, but the whole thought was that Burnt McQueen's just a little too violent, right? A little too harsh. I personally think it's fine. Especially if you're you know releasing the damage version of characters still, like Damage King. But anyway, here's yet another variant of Burnt Light McQueen. I don't think I have this one either. This one came from Get Me Collectibles. Now, if I do have it, oh well, but I really don't think I do. I watched my collection video to make sure, but it's always hard to kind of tell with like the expressions, especially the models that they interchange frequently. You can see that they always use the mouth plate back in 2010 so they could interchange them and put new ones on. It's actually quite smart, but I think they found a way to make it even cheaper. They just standardized the process of making new molds, but they don't really do stuff like this anymore. Anyways, which variant do you prefer? I definitely like this one better. He's got a more unique expression to me. He definitely looks, <laughs> he looks a little bit more like he's about to die here. This one, he looks a little more scared, but McQueen does really, really get singed on the back here. Like really singed, as you can see, like burnt to an absolute crisp. But yeah, it's cool to have both of these in the collection now, especially, you know, because I always say like, oh yeah, I have pretty much every car Mattel release, but I guess I do miss some variants, especially some of those older, more obscure ones. Now this stuff is pretty exciting. They are the Tomica Light McQueen Day releases. So every year to celebrate Light McQueen Day, which is... 9-5, September 5th, Tomika does some sort of special commemorative release sometimes. Well, last year it was the gold McQueen, Mater, and Mac, but usually it's just like a new variant of McQueen. And before they did the gold ones, in my opinion, they were kind of boring. They did like a McQueen with translucent wheels or tires. Before that, they did like a set of McQueens from Cars 3. I think these are probably the most unique versions or the most unique releases for McQueen Day and maybe even the entire Tomica Cars line ever. Like these are incredible. I'm not sure if I would say they're better than the gold ones because those are just like stunning. But in terms of creativity and uniqueness, this stuff is pretty wild. They're basically like, I don't want to butcher this, but to me they come across as celebrating Japanese culture on the cars. I mean, you could see, I think that's Mount Fuji right there. And you could see like the petals or the leaves off of a cherry blossom tree within the design here for McQueen's Bolt and also on Mater. And you could also see, I think would be like 95 in Japanese. If you guys read Japanese, please let me know what the Japanese text here and here says. And even there as well, that'd be great. I will probably do a video on these two in the near future because of the fact that they're just so cool. I never would have expected Tommy Cut to release something so vastly different. I mean, these are completely like their original designs. Disney nor Pixar gave them like any art to use for this to go off of. They were just like, we're going to create something entirely original for Lightning McQueen Day 2022. And yeah, that's awesome. Their next two releases as I talked about, will be the Cave, McQueen, and Mater. And then after that, they get boring because they go to Road Trip McQueen and Racing Center Cruise. So, yeah. We've had some good Tomic releases, though, over the last couple months. What is this? Is this even a car's item? Oh, it is. Oh, my God. I was like, what is that? It looks like nails and bolts, but it is actually mini racers. Yay. This is actually awesome. I'm glad that I got this. Whoa. I'm gonna need my tea. Where is my tea, guys? I'm just gonna have to barehand this. I can't believe I've lost my tea. Oh, I got it. The tea is gonna come and save the day here. Yes, sir. 
Well, and see, not only did I get some cool mini racers in here, but I also got a nice little plastic container. Wow, this is some wild tape. Noisy tape, strong tape, but not strong enough for Mr. Docket, which will be my future channel name. And wow, I already cracked <laughs> the tote. Oh my God, I'm absolutely destroying it. That's okay, I just wanna get into it. I won't be using this thing for anything. Let's get all the minis out. As you can see, they're looking a little funky. You're probably like, whoa, what are they? That's a dinosaur. I don't understand, what are these? Well, let's find out together. So these are some prototype mini racers that I couldn't be more excited to have obtained. I mean, they're like super unique ones too, as you can see here. This is a Danny Suarez, and the body is just like bare metal that's been tarnished and weathered and like rusted almost. Like it's so odd. I don't know how this had possibly occurred. It does have a date stamp, but all almost all mini racer prototypes do still have date stamps. I'm not sure why, but that's just how it goes. You can see like the whole, what's that called? Rivet is corroded and whatnot. So it's just like a really cool patina type look here. And it's weird because like the spoiler in his eyes and everything are intact. And I think one of these, maybe this one, yeah, I think they're unspun. So the whole base can come off. I'm going to leave it like it is right now so it's just easier to display. But I'm sure one of the ones that we come across here in a moment will come apart on us. Yeah, yeah, here we go, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Jackson Storm, for demonstrating my point. But yeah, here you have another patinaed Jackson Storm that is unspun. Very cool, very unique prototypes. Here's one that's slightly different. It's another Jackson Storm, but it's not as weathered and tarnished as the other ones. And it's not as like reflective. You can see this is more of like a mirror finish, whereas this one's more just like silver. So yeah, really cool. Some of the stuff, I am so disappointed almost that it gets like buried in a gig hall. Like we're probably like 13, 16, we're like at the 30 minute mark in the gig hall. And like, I hope somebody's still watching. I know somebody's still watching, but this stuff's really cool. I wanna share it with the world. and. I wish that more people would see it, but maybe that just means I need to do a video on some mini racer prototypes because I have quite a few now. Here's a Lightning McQueen that's more in the vein of that second Jackson Storm. You can see it's still tarnished, but not to the point of like this, right? So cool stuff. That's your Lightning McQueen. I wish they had some more interesting characters. Republic 36, I think that's the eBay seller name. So shout out to him. Here's a darker one. This comes across like way darker on the camera. It's not that bad, but you can see it's <laughs> it's got like a black tone along the fenders and everything and the bumpers. So pretty interesting. I've never gotten any prototypes like this before. So it's pretty interesting, pretty cool. Something new to freshen up the collection for sure. And then here we have the dino, Big Daddy Dino, although it's more like Little Daddy Dino. Let's see if he has a bait stamp. For, I don't think this one does. You also wanna know what he doesn't have. Maybe you already peeped, but he doesn't have eyes. Yeah, you guys know I love my no eyes airs. I think this is a no eyes prototype. because so I don't see a date stamp on him either and all these other ones are prototypes. So I do think this one is as well. Wow, so yeah, this is Mattel's first die-cast dinosaur. Of course, they're also doing mini racers of the Ankylosaurus and the Quadratorcosaur. And eventually they'll do the Mechala Turbulotops and the Spino Crankshafterex. And obviously they already did do this Tyrannomyciosaurus Rex in the large plastic scale. Oh, and my light just shut off. I will be right back and turn that back on. Sorry about that guys, but we are back. As I was saying, they did do the larger plastic version of this already, and I will leave my link for that in the description hopefully. But yeah, it's one of my most popular, I think it is like my most popular on the road video so far for the merchandise. Yeah, everyone's loving the dinosaur stuff so far, and I don't blame you. It's definitely the most unique additions that Cars on the Road gave to the Cars universe. So yeah, really cool here. I will do a whole review on all the mini racer dinosaurs in the very near future, or maybe it was even posted before this video. But yeah, 
So a little mini racer action for the video. Wow, this is getting messy and fast, but honestly, I kind of like it messy like that, but we got to make sure the T is in a good spot. What is in this purple little sack here? Is this even a cars item? Oh, it is. <laughs> I was like, what could possibly be that small? This is pretty sweet here. Can you guys tell what it is? So Disney did like a Pizza Planet truck pin set and it included like the Pizza Planet truck from multiple like Pixar movies, not just the Cars movies. But this is the pin that they included for Top Pizza Planet truck in the first Cars movie. And I just loved it because it included like two other characters that we have as die cast. You have Bob Cutlass and Jay Lowly. Like I can't believe they actually... <laughs> Like, it's so obscure. Like, oh, yeah, what cars, like, what characters do you have as pins? And it's like, yeah, well, Jay Lowley's got a pin. It's like, what? <laughs> Such an obscure character released as a super chase in 2016. And he's just vibing with Todd there. So, yeah, pretty cool pin. Looks like it's a limited edition of 300. What? I didn't even know that. 30th anniversary, maybe? Pixar Party. Wow, I had no idea that this was so coveted or limited. So it will definitely be preserved here in my collection. Definitely a unique piece. That's pretty cool, actually. The fact that there's only 300 of them really gets me a little excited. All right, what's in this small box? Oh, this is even more exciting than that. Limited to 300? Yeah, well, how about limited to about one? At least so far, it is a prototype of Robert Jam Jones. Missing the... <laughs> the guitar though I didn't even realize that when I bought it he does yeah he has the guitar with him yeah so it is missing the guitar unfortunately but that's okay I do have a prototype of clay play fork actually <laughs> that is my name for him internally but rich hurry is the actual name that Mattel gave him unfortunately our Pixar Mattel gave him the slide guitar player I have a prototype of him I think I've shown it before in a video but either way I had to pounce on this one because it gives me the opportunity to maybe one day get a prototype of all the band members. You know, I just kind of need Pam Wheeldaro and maybe Sweet Tea. That'd be pretty sweet. But yeah, this one cost me a little bit of cashola, but pretty excited though. You guys know I love my prototypes and especially unique ones like this. Like I have not seen another one of these for sale ever. Whereas with other prototypes, I have seen like there's quite a few that you know there are multiples made and that's okay like it makes sense for them to make multiples of a prototype to test it out and send it about and you know all that stuff make sure it is sustainable but you know they do come across as a little bit less desirable than the you know ones that you only see one of all right what is in here is this even a car's item <laughs> oh my god yes this is like amazing this might be like the best thing from the entire Giga Hall here. This thing is insane, guys. You guys are probably thinking, what could possibly be so good wrapped in tissue paper and is about a couple centimeters thick? Well, it is none other than the Cars on the Road D23 official road map poster. I don't even want to like unfold it because I'll probably never be able to refold it. <laughs> But I will unfold it. I'll probably do a video on this though. So maybe I'll just tease you with it here. But I just love the fact that they put so much effort into this map. Like it is a legit map. Look. Look. It's a legit map. Look at all these towns. Rusty Wrench, Rapid City, Skid City, Wreckville, New Flat Tire, New Torque, Vanarama. That's my favorite so far. Oh, nope. Sant. Sant Fan Belt. Go San Fel San Fan Belt Go. All right, that's my new favorite one. Tired Town, Bumperville, Stop Go. And of course, they're all listed here. Oh my god, that is so cool. San Hose Spray. Wow, even none of them are even listed here. Washing Car DC. Oh my god, this is so cool. Kingpin, Little Shocks, Lower Lemon, My Hood. So this. Legend here, Cities of Cars on the Road doesn't even list all of them that are on the map here because you have San Fen Beltgo, Truckee. Oh my God, guys, this is so cool. 
And you can see it has all the destinations from the show, like the Dino Park and the hotel. This official map of cars on the road going northwest, southwest, east, south, or west, north. This will guide you through this winding world. But like any good map, once you unfold me, yep, exactly. See, they even know you might never be able to fold me back. That is so cool, guys. This is one of the coolest things I've gotten for cars in a long time. Although it does look like the map repeats itself because you can see there it says Truckee. Right in the top left there. And then here I could see Truckee again. So, yeah, I mean, it's understandable that it could repeat itself. But it looks like they all meshed it together to make it look like a actual large map. Yeah, I could see Vanorama up here again. So there's probably like, I don't know, maybe if they, I'm not sure, maybe they divide this into fourths or six. So you'll find like Vanorama on here four times or six times. I'm totally okay with that because they clearly still did put a lot of effort into this. And I'll definitely have to make a video on this because this is just so cool. I can't believe they actually made something so detailed it just doesn't really seem like something they do anymore and that sounds bad but that's just kind of the vibe i get we need to get a die cast of that vw clown oh and this guy a zombie oh my god another little legend there you might not know where you're going but you sure know where you've been that sounds like what mater said when he was explaining to McQueen how he can drive backwards so well. This is really cool. Definitely one of the most detailed things that Disney and Pixar has ever put out, or at least in a long time, for the Cars franchise. All right, we're not even like made really a dent into the boxes yet, so we're just going to keep roaring on. Here we have a three-pack. Oh, Looks like it's coming off of the card a little bit there. The glue is coming off, so that's not good. This seller actually like reminded me. He's like, hey, like, can you like leave feedback for me? I'm like, well, I won't be home for a few more days to open it. So that's just kind of funny that he like was really trying to front run and get me to leave feedback, even though I think just arrived a couple days ago. Either way, this is a pretty rare three pack because of the fact of the inclusion of Dirt Track Doc Hudson. This is the only time Dirt Track Doc Hudson was ever released, and that is just Doc with the red tires here. You know, there are so many variations of Doc that this one does get overlooked, but it's actually a really classy version. You know, I like how he looks with just the red tires, whereas the decals get a little messy, in my opinion. But yeah, cool stuff. Old classic three pack, but. Yeah, it's starting to come off the card there a little bit. Unfortunately, we'll see. Hopefully that wasn't his fault, as in the seller's fault. All right, what we have here? Oh, my God. I don't even know if I could show you guys this. I don't even know if I could show you guys this. This is just, oh, my God. You guys honestly have probably already seen the review of this. So <laughs> I think it's okay to show. Because I will definitely prioritize reviewing this, but this is just insane. This is one of the coolest customs I've probably ever seen in my entire life. And it is none other than Cap'n Longleggy from the Road Rumbler episode of Cars on the Road. Who knows when Mattel will be able to make this because of the fact that their deluxe line is in shambles right now. They haven't released a new deluxe since 2021. And the deluxes aren't even sold at major U.S. retailers anymore. So who knows when they'll even release Ivy, let alone Cap and Longleggy here. And this is just a great custom by Mike Duffy. Obviously, like I said, I probably already reviewed it. And I probably talked about it in depth and showed it all there. But here's another look at it. Definitely check out that video, though, if you want to get a full review of this fantastic custom. One of the best, most intricate customs I think I've ever seen. I mean, this is a lot of this is created like from scratch, 3D printed, using initially a Dustin Mellows Miles Meat Truck Malone casting. Wow, that is so cool. Oh my God, I can't wait to do my video on this. It's so freaking awesome. All right, I'm gonna put that over here. Okay. See, there's nothing else in the box, I don't think. Let's move on. What we got here? Have a spooktacular day. All right, I appreciate this. Oh, 
Okay. Oh, this is kind of boring, actually. Yeah, this... <laughs> oh, no! Ooh. You're frankly the best customer. Wow, this guy's really Halloween-y. Oh, I was hoping this sticker would also be Halloween-esque, but it's not. Just says thank you. But yes, here we have yet another one of the Dats, Jammin' and Royce Revley 2-packs. Because I was thinking, like, oh, I get one to open, one to keep in the package. Plus, this seller that I buy from frequently, like, literally messaged me and was like, hey, do you want this? I was like, well, sure, I guess. So, a little bit of just feeling, you know, like I should support my seller along with wanting to get ahead of time. So, yeah, it kind of backfired on me. And this one's in almost perfect condition besides the hookup here. So, that, that really sucks, actually, because the other one is in bad condition everywhere but the hook. This one's in good condition everywhere but the hook. Just my luck. All right. Put that over here. Yeah, the table is officially messy right now. But we are getting to the end here. Oh, yeah, I got a new Cubs hat because I love the Cubs. So, yeah, there you have a new Cubs hat. You guys will see that probably in the next Giga Haul. Everyone comments about the hats that I wear. I always have like a different hat on in each video. So here's your 2022 Singles Case M, which I'm sure you already saw me unbox. So there's that. Oh my, this is quite the mess. All right, here we have another box. This one's quite big. So I'm gonna have to kind of unbox it off camera here. I don't even know what could have been this big that I ordered. Oh, everyone's using my real name on these notes. Can you, can you not? Don't you know I do a Giga Haul? <laughs> Don't you know? All right, this is a pretty neat acquisition here for the primary reason that it's an air. So you guys can ruminate over what it is. You can probably tell it's already a multi-pack. You can probably tell it's the Tuners 5-pack exclusive to Walmart stores, which I have not found yet, but it seems to be pretty common. So I guess I just haven't really looked that hard for it. But the reason why I went ahead and ordered one off eBay is because, like I said, it is an air. Somebody on Instagram actually messaged me telling me about this in the first place. So thank you to that person. I believe your name is Simon. So thank you if you're watching this for alerting me of this air. This is a pretty cool, very inexplicable air because McQueen's eyes are just like, they're just weird. Like he's got that massive black barrier on three sides of his windshield there and he's got like some blackness in his mouth like it's basically like a halloween mcqueen because he's got like blood dripping from his mouth <laughs> it's what it looks like it's just weird you know it's not like easy to explain like oh yeah that's a no eyes there oh oh yeah that's unspun or oh yeah that's got the wrong name tag no this one's got like weird black markings and <laughs> whatnot so yeah cool i absolutely love the look of this multi-pack and the fact that they make it look like the tuners are lighting up i think it's one of the best multi-pack presentations they've done in a long time like it looks good aesthetically obviously nothing new in it but it looks cool and it's got a nice backdrop here as well i love that they're still using that dj image from 2006 i think that boost image looks new but these also look like they're from 2006 honestly mcqueen that one's a little bit newer, but that DJ is the oldest stock image in the book. All right, what else do we have here? I think I just have the 2022 Singles Case J, which I also will have unboxed probably by now. So that is all, guys, for Giga Hall Part 11. This is a long episode, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I guess that's really what they should be. I mean, they should be Giga Hauls, not some 20 four minute video that's like a micro haul i mean obviously it's still a lot of stuff but i set a president in those first two parts of giga haul you know the first couple parts that i did way back in february and march and so yeah thank you guys for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it and i will see you guys soon for another video let me know what was your favorite thing that came out of this and also in the comment section below if you've gotten anything recently to add to your collection, I'd love to hear it. Absolutely would love to engage with conversation with you guys. So I'll see you soon for another video. Bye now.